Hey everyone, welcome to NumPy and its functionality. In the previous section, we saw a general overview of Python and the IPython Jupyter Notebook. We'll continue the section discussing at some lengths the NumPy module and some of its functionality to get you started on using an important extension of Python. We'll cover working with NumPy arrays, avoiding for loops, learn more about matrices and the functionality of NumPy for reading and writing data. Without further delay, let's start with making the functionality on NumPy in a Python session. With making the functionality on NumPy in a Python session, and detail the topic of working with NumPy arrays. Accordingly, in this video we'll show some usage of NumPy arrays, with some examples that'll be helpful for the rest of this video course. NumPy adds support for large multidimensional arrays and matrices, along with a large library of high-level mathematical functions to operate on arrays. In this sense, NumPy arrays are the building blocks on which the high-performance functionality of SciPy rests on. This is one major reason for starting with a brief overview on NumPy arrays, before using SciPy, for numerical computations. Before defining a NumPy array, one needs to make available in Python the num one needs to make available in Python the NumPy module. This is done running the instruction. Import NumPy as NP. It's the recommended way to make NumPy functionality in the current Python working environment, as it's the customary way of naming the NumPy module. But you could use any other combination of words. NumPy data containers are called array. One way to create this is starting from a standard Python list as shown here. An X list with five elements and a Y list with eight elements, both one dimensional. We could check these Python list objects by applying the Python function type and print the respective output. Now to make a NumPy array from any of the list above, we apply to the array NumPy method or function. Notice that such a function is preceded by the characters NP, indicating that array is a method of the NumPy module. Recall that NP was used as a synonym of NumPy when it was imported into the Python session. Again, use type to check that the variables in this example, x, x, and y, y, are NumPy arrays, as shown in the respective output. Similarly, we could print the content of the array to make sure they were not changed. As expected, they are the same in the respective list. We also repeat printing its type. Another way to create a NumPy array is by typing its value directly. As you can see, this requires typing a Python list surrounded or bracketed by NP array. We then check that the object stored in the variable xxx is of type array. As you might expect, NumPy provides functions or methods to inquire about the object stored. Some common ones are the shape, size, dimensionality, and the type of the elements or objects in the array. The NumPy function shape will show the number of elements in each direction of the dimensionality of the array. In two dimensions, it shows the number of rows and columns. Here, the array is one-dimensional, stored in, stored in as one raw vector, as indicated by the entry 5 comma, meaning 5 rows and no columns. The size of the array is provided by the method size. It gives the total number of elements contained in the array. Here, the array contains 5 elements. The dimensionality of the array is given by the method nDim. In our example, it outputs the number 1, indicating that we're dealing with a one-dimensional array. To a NumPy array, we can also apply the Python intrinsic we can also apply the Python intrinsic function len. For one-dimensional arrays, len and size give the same output number of elements in the array. For other dimensions, they give different output as we'll see shortly. 
The type of objects in the array are obtained via the method dtype. In this example, they are of type float64, meaning 64-bit objects. There are other ways to make NumPy arrays of heterogeneous objects, but covering it is beyond this course. NumPy provides a great amount of methods to operate very efficiently, and many, if not all, support parallel computations. In this vein, we'll consider the functionality for reshaping an array. As shown in this example, we can make a two-dimensional array operating with the method reshape on a one-dimensional array. In addition to this, the method reshape takes an argument consistent of a tuple with the shape of the object we want to obtain after applying it. Here, we're reshaping the one-dimensional YY array in a two-dimensional array, having the number in n fillis as rows and the number in n columns as columns. Both are passed to the reshape method as the tuple n fillis, comma, n columns, after the YY array and separated by comma. One needs to keep in mind that the product n fillis, n fillis, and columns must be equal to the number of elements in the array being reshaped. One more method for obtaining an array of different dimensionality as the initial one is the mesh grid method. In this example, we pass it to the one-dimensional arrays xx and yy to obtain two matrices, or two-dimensional arrays x and y build as follows. The first argument to MeshGrid is the XX array. MeshGrid method returns as its first result, called X, which repeats this first input argument, XX, into many columns as the second input argument, in this case, YY. As a second result, the MeshGrid method returns an array called Y consisting of the second input argument transposed to a column-wise vector, then repeated as many rows as the first input element has. One should mention that the mesh grid method transforms its operating arguments as one-dimensional arrays before operating on them. As an application of the NumPy methods previously studied, we can operate with them on any one of these matrices. We choose the Y matrix to inquire about its shape, size, dimensionality, len, and the type of its element. It's noticed in this case, the size method and function len returns different values. Size y returns 40, and the len returns 8. As we already know, size returns the total number of elements in the array. But in this case, len returns the number of rows in the array. A very useful method provided by NumPy to operate in its array data structure is the functionality to find elements. Two special methods, two special methods to find non a number, an inf, infinity, entries in a data set. It's very common to find missing values in a real data collecting task. In many situations, any missing value is represented by a NAN entry. There are also situations on which the numbers could overflow according to the machine representation of the numbers that we're dealing with. Overflow is represented by inf. NumPy provides the methods isNan and isIf for finding such NAN and inf entries to an array in an array. To show how both methods work, we'll replace two entries from the matrix Y, the entries Y, 1, 3. And Y, 5, and Y, 4, 4 with NAN and IMP entries, respectively. Before doing the replacement, the respective values were saved in the variables temp1 and temp2. We could see that the methods 
ISNAN, and ISIF returns Boolean type objects of the same dimensionality, containing true values on the position. On the position of the NAN or IMP entries, respectively. NumPy provides the WHERE method, which is helpful to find indices, determining the position of a value in an array. In an array. Next, we replace those NAN and IMP entries by the numerical values previously saved in the temp1 and temp2 variables. Getting back to the initial, getting back the initial Y matrix. Here's another example using the WHERE method to find the indices of the to find the indices of the values in Y that are greater than 3. The first entry in the tuple returned by the WHERE method are the rows corresponding to those values, while the second entry in the tuple corresponds to the columns. Thus, we compare 4 and 0, 4 and 1, and so on, as corresponding to positions of values greater than 3 in the Y array. In the y array. The lid space is used to create a one-dimensional array whose consecutive elements are same distance away the log space whose consecutive elements are same distance away. The log space methods make separation logarithmical. It's up to the user to tell both methods how this division is going to take place. Here we're dividing the interval minus 1 to 1 to 1 into 3 segments to 1 into 3 segments. Using lint space, two consecutive segments have the same length while using log space. The nodes vertices of the uniform spaced grid of the uniform spaced grid are taken to the power of 10. For instance, the first node of value 0.1 returned by the log space method corresponds to 10 to the power minus 1. The second value 0.464158 corresponds to 10 to the power minus 0.33333. Third value corresponds to 10 to the power 0.33333. And the last value corresponds to 10 to 1. The zero method is a way to create arrays whose elements are all zero. In our example, we created a two-dimensional array of three rows and five columns filled with zeros filled with zeros of type float the ones method is a way to create arrays whose elements are all ones in our example we created a two dimensional array of four rows and three columns filled with ones on type int The identity method is a way to create a two-dimensional square array whose main diagonal is filled with ones while the rest of the elements are zero. Create a two-dimensional identity array of three rows by three columns of type int. The I method is a way to create two-dimensional arrays not necessarily square ones, whose main diagonal by default is filled with ones, while the rest of the ele while the rest of the elements are zero. Clearly, the identity method is a special case of the I method. The I method takes an extra parameter, the K parameter, which is used to set which diagonal in the array is going to be filled with ones. Positive values of the parameters refers to upper diagonals relative to the main diagonal, for which the K parameter takes the value of zero. Negative values for the K parameter refers to lower diagonals relative to the main diagonal. For example, while K equals minus one, 
refers to the first lower diagonal under the main diagonal. Via matrix operations, we could get other forms of matrices combining these ones. Here's an example of having a matrix with its first upper and lower diagonal filled with ones. Other elements are zero. The other example is a bit more complicated involving adding and multiplication of matrix operations. Those operations will be explored a bit further in the next videos. The NumPy module provides much more methods to work efficiently with arrays. You can explore them in the following references. One of them is Chapter 2 of our book, Learning SciPy for Numerical and Scientific Computing, 2nd Edition, published by PACT in 2015. You can browse the codes for this video in the companion Jupyter Notebook of this video lecture. You can browse the codes for this video in the companion Jupyter Notebook of this video lecture, which you can find at the companion website of this video course, or by going to this address. An additional reference is the NumPy tutorial, found at this link. All the additional references are listed here. Take some time to go through them. In this video, we explored the creation and basic manipulation of NumPy arrays. The video lecture roughly follows the same structure as the official NumPy reference, which can be accessed at docs.scipy.org. There are other good sources that cover NumPy with rigor and any other material for a more detailed coverage of this topic.